All right, I want to show you four statements. I'm going to make four statements to kind of illustrate this point. Okay, statement number one. Here we have a picture of a white dog. All right. Number two, we have a black cat. Number three, we have a brown cow. And finally, number four, we have a red horse. You say, now, now hold on a second there. I can prove you wrong, Brian. That horse is not red, it's white. And you'd be correct. So we'll say, there I made a mistake. I'm wrong. It's not a red horse, it's a white horse. Now, because I was wrong on the, the horse, does that disprove the other ones? Does that invalidate the truth that I told on the other three points? No, of course not. That'd be ridiculous to have that way of thinking. And yet that's exactly what the new versionists do with Ruckman. And they do it, the same thing with Gail Ripplinger. I'll talk about that in a minute. They say Ruckman has this kooky belief about abortion and he has this belief about that and he has that belief about that. So that disproves everything. We should throw everything out, burn all of Ruckman's material. He's a heretic. He's not saved. He's not a Christian. You see? Stupid. Absolutely stupid. You don't throw everything else out simply because you can prove him wrong in a point or two. I mean, give me a break. Okay? Just absolutely ridiculous. And they do the same thing, like I mentioned previously with Gail Ripplinger. This book right here, New Age Bible Versions. Well, she misspelled a guy's name, and uh, she misquoted some guy here, or, you know, she did this or she did that. So we really can't listen to the book. Uh, well, the book is almost 700 pages in length. And if she's wrong in one or two points, that doesn't invalidate the rest of the material. Okay? There is a New Age conspiracy. There is a satanic conspiracy to get rid of this book right here. And if you can prove one or two points wrong in this book, that doesn't invalidate the rest of the points. But you see, when you're a new versionist, it does. You, you grasp at anything that you can. You say, well, Ruckman believes this and Ruckman's past life and Ruckman... Ru well, let me tell you something. It's not about Ruckman. It's about the Bible. Okay? Just absolutely ridiculous. And you say, well, I just... I, I can't go along with, with uh, Peter Ruckman or Gail Ripplinger. I just... I don't think I could be King James only because Ruckman and Ripplinger. I just have my problems with them. Okay. You don't want to go along with... Ripplinger's material. Here's a couple more books. Just phenomenal. Excellent stuff. You know? Well, then why don't you go with David W. Daniels? Here's four books. Are you going to start digging up information on him? On his personal life? To try and disprove the King James Only movement? How about Sam Gipp? So, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I can't stand this, this vulgar, crude, rude way of doing things. Okay, how about Dr. Jack Mormon? Here's two books of his. Here's uh, two things that he did on the Church Fathers and the early manuscripts. Very, very scholarly work. How about uh, Dr. Douglas D. Stauffer? Again, another scholarly work. Very nice the way he talks and everything. He's not abrasive like Ruckman, you know. What about that? And here we have a couple more. I'll just show you quick. Dr. Mickey P. Carter. The name of the book is Things That Are Different Are Not the Same. <laughs> now that's a basic statement, but I'll tell you there's a lot in it. All right. The new versions are different than the King James Bible. Oh, it says the same thing. Are you mad? Are you crazy? It does not say the same thing. I mean, it just just incredible. You know, how, how sick mentally the new modern Christian is. Here you have Dr. William P. Grady. He's not mean-spirited. Edward F. Hills. David Otis Fuller. Les Garrett. The information's there. You don't have to study Ruckman. You don't have to read and watch and see all this stuff. You don't have to do that. You don't have to go with Gail Ripplinger. There's plenty of other people out there to prove that the new versions are corrupt. And you say, well, yes, but, you know, it was started by Ruckman. This whole Ruckmanite movement was started by Ruckman. Uh, that's nonsense. Here's a book by Dean John William Bergen. 
this thing came out was in print years and years and years. I don't know the exact, I haven't added up the years, but many, many years before Ruckman was even born or, or conceived, <laughs> you know? And I'm going to be doing a video in the future, by the way, uh, pre-Ruckman Ruckmanites, to show you that there were King James Bible believers before Ruckman and King James onlyism, you know, as they say, they, they try to tie it to Ruckman. It wasn't Ruckman's movement, okay? But, you know, they'll say, people say, okay, so you're saying that Ruckman is wrong in a point or two, but that doesn't disprove everything else. Well, then they'll point the finger at me and they'll say, well, you do the same thing with Westcott and Hort. They were wrong in a couple spots. Okay, well, let's look at that for a second. Now, what's the standard that's given by Jesus Christ uh, for a true ministry? Well, Matthew chapter 7, verse 20 says, Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Now, what are the fruits of Gail Ripplinger and Peter Ruckman? Here are the two controversial books. Oh, you know, the Alexandrians probably are running for cover right now. You know, weeping and wailing and gnashing their teeth. What are the, what are the fruits of these two books right here? Well, these books produce people that believe in a book. This produces Bible belief, belief in and assurance that there is a book that can be called God's Word. So you can't call a book with errors in it. You can't call that book God's Word because then either God made mistakes or you're smarter than God and can point them out. See? So if you're carrying around a Bible that has mistakes in it and you say, well, it's not perfect, then it's not God's Word. And don't lie to people and pretend that it is God's Word when you don't believe it is. Or when you don't believe it's without error. See, that's the issue here. But now, what about a book like this? What kind of a Christian does this kind of junk produce? You know, the writings of, of people like James White or D.A. Carson or some of these others. What kind of a philosophy, or Westcott and Hort, by the way. These men believe in what's called naturalistic textual criticism. In other words, this is just a man-made book, just like anything else, just like uh, Moby Dick or Shakespeare or whatever. It's just literature. So you can change it, you can add to it, you can take away from it, you can do whatever you want with it. There is no, this philosophy, the end of this philosophy, and they'll, they'll play little word games and they'll go to here and they'll go, they'll weasel, try to weasel out of it, but the end philosophy of this right here, the fruit of this right here is there is no perfect written Word of God on the planet. There was at some point in the past the original autographs, but it's not here anymore, so you just kind of go with what you feel is right. You see, this right here, Ruckmanism, if you want to call it that, Ruckmanism, King James Onlyism, teaches authority, teaches final authority. You can hold the Word of God in your hands and you can present it to the lost, you can present it to the saved, and you can teach. You can speak as one having authority and not as the scribes. See? That's the whole issue here. So you say, Brian, are you a Ruckmanite? Well, if, if being a Ruckmanite means that I believe in this book and that I can appreciate Dr. Ruckman's teachings, if that means being a Ruckmanite, then yes, I am a Ruckmanite. But if being a Ruckmanite means that I'm part of his cult and I view him as God and I don't question his authority and things, well then no, I'm not a Ruckmanite. Okay? And it's interesting too because all the brethren that are on here, you know, my friends and things here on YouTube, if you've studied any of Ruckman's materials, it's weird how we all kind of come out with our own independent thought. Even people that have gone to PBI, they come out thinking independently. And yet, Anybody who's really spent much time studying under Ruckman, they come out, believe in the King James Bible, preaching on the street, going door to door, missions, handing out gospel tracts, witnessing. That's the fruits of Ruckmanism. Okay? What are the fruits of the New Version crowd, the hyper Calvinist, like James White? All you get there are people who deny the Bible, deny the scriptures. 
And of course, if you're a hyper Calvinist, well, there's really no point in evangelizing the lost because, you know, unconditional election. God's going to save those who are elect. And if they're not elect, well, there's nothing you can do for them anyhow, so just let them go to hell. That's what they were created for. Now, you know, oh, that's oversimplification. No, it's telling the truth. That's what Calvinism is. Okay, that's the system of Calvinism. So, I'm going to do a video. My next one coming up will be on pre-Ruckman Ruckmanites to show you that the King James Bible-believing crowd has always been ridiculed. Okay, we've always been mocked. And we always will be. I mean, that just comes with the territory. So, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.